Chapter 37, A Hard Choice Window said you two had a very exciting time, Mom said. I want to hear all about it. Dad pulled a car onto the highway. We have a long drive ahead. Plenty of time for you to share everything with us. Bay and I exchanged glances across the back seat. Did we really want to tell Mom and Dad the danger we had been in? I didn't think so. The animal attacks in the forest, the strange creatures, the fake Uncle Windows, the giant locusts, the tree bears, the scariest book you've ever written. Would they even believe any of it? Bay and I had talked about it before Mom and Dad came to pick us up. We decided maybe we had to go slow and tell it to him a little at a time. That way, maybe they wouldn't be too shocked or horrified. Dad sped up. Farm fields were by outside the car windows. Well, start telling us everything, he said. You two were so quiet. Did you actually have a boring time? It wasn't exactly boring, I said. It, but well, we want to hear about your trip, Betty chimed in. How was London? Where did you go? What did you see? What was the best part? Mom turned to us from the front seat. I'll tell you the worst part, she said. We missed the two of you so much. Next time, we're going to bring you with us, Dad said. We'll have a real family vacation. Yay! Betty and I both uttered a long cheer. We dropped the suitcases in the entrance hall. We were both happy to be home. No bats flying around with human heads. No strange cries from a nearby forest. Dan ran out and bought a whole bucket of chicken and a bunch of sides. It tasted so awesome. Normal life. After dinner, Betty and I went upstairs to our rooms to unpack. I lugged the suitcase to my bed. When I lifted the lid, I found a surprise. Betty, I shouted. I think you better get in here. Hurry. She came into my room, unfolding some sweaters. What's your problem, Billy? Look, I said. I pointed to the blue canvas book bag at the top of my suitcase. Oh, no, she murmured. I lifted the bag and peeked inside. I saw the heavy black book and a small white envelope. Oh, no. Oh, no, Betty repeated. I opened the envelope and read the note inside. I knew your house was the safest place to hide the book. Keep it safe. Keep it from all eyes. I know you will protect it. Love, Uncle Window. I dropped the note to my bed. My hand shook as I picked up the book bag. What shall we do? Where should we hide it? I asked, my voice trembling. Betty and I stared at each other, thinking hard. I know, Betty said finally. That storage drawer you never use, in the back of your closet. It's in behind all your clothes. Yes, perfect, I said. I started to the closet, but the bag slipped from my hands and the book slid onto the bedspread. Betty and I both reached for it. I lifted it into my arms. It was heavier than I imagined. Betty smoothed her hand over the cover. I sat back down on the bed. Betty and I gazed at each other. I knew we were both thinking at the same time. I wrapped my fingers around the thick black book cover. Before we hide it away, I said, should we open it? Just one peek.